Good morning, Grade Sevens. Welcome to your daily lesson of mathematics brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. Hope you guys are all well today and looking forward to today's lesson. Just a reminder of the email address on your screen, grade seven at worksheetcloud.com. Please feel free to send me any questions, queries, feedback, or perhaps there's something you'd like me to, to cover. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to do that for you moving forward. Uh, there is today's schedule. Uh, we have our warm-ups uh, and mental maths questions, which cover previously taught principles. So just a bit of a recap and some consolidation there. And then today we're looking at data handling and more specifically, we're looking at averages. And then we've got our usual brain benders and challenges to finish off on. So let's get into our warm-up for today. You can see that these warm-up activities are starting to get a little bit more trickier. Um, this one is pertaining to fractions, so please press pause and work through it. Uh, take your time, there's no rush, there's no race, there's no prize for first place. Uh, it's the quality of work that we're looking for uh, and make sure that you understand what you're doing and make sure to check your work once you have completed it. Right, off you go. We have Batman, Deadpool and Cyclops, so a bit of a superhero theme. And I can see from the third line that Batman and Deadpool are equal to each other. Okay, so that means on the fourth line, five multiplied by five must equal 25. So that means Batman's five and Deadpool is equal to five. Okay, then I can use those numbers now that I've figured out and I can see that Deadpool is five, Cyclops is four because five minus four is one. Okay, and then at the top, one's going to equal, and we know that Batman is five, so that's one fifth, and Cyclops is four, and Deadpool is five, so one fifth plus four fifths is equal to one whole, so that's good. And then right at the bottom, um, I've got five plus five minus four, uh, and you can do that in any, any order, really, uh, and that's going to give you an answer of six so when i say you can do it in any order you can say five minus four is one and then five plus one is six or you can say five plus five is ten minus four is six okay um i hope you guys managed to to work through that and and figure those answers out okay so our mental arithmetic work for today is on the screen uh there are nine questions there and again i'm going to encourage you guys to take your time uh to work methodically logically set your work out carefully write everything down you know when you can see things that you're thinking they make a lot more sense um so yeah write it down um check your work we've gone through a lot of checking strategies over the past few weeks uh and then press play to see how you guys get on right off you go number one is just addition uh and the key here which we've spoken about quite a few times is putting the correct numbers in the correct columns Okay, and that's what your calculation should look like. You're more than welcome to put uh, a zero over here just so that you've got, uh, you know, there's a bit of symmetry in the, in the calculation. So you understand that you're adding eight and zero. Okay, and then we just add normally and you should get an answer of eight comma zero nine eight. Okay, your second question, subtraction, and again, really important to have the correct numbers in the correct columns. Uh, and you can see here that we are going to have to use uh, a placeholder, or we are going to have to include zero, so that we can see uh, that zero uh, minus eight, we need to borrow from the nine, so that becomes 10 minus eight, which is two. 8 minus 2 is 6. Okay, I can't do 3 minus the 6, so I need to borrow again. So 13 uh, minus 6 is 7. We know that the decimals must line up. Uh, I'm sure you guys are tired of me, of me saying that. Uh, and then the checking strategy that we can use is 2 plus 8 is 10. Yep, 6 and 2 is 8. Absolutely. 7 and 6 is 13. That's all good. And 4 and 1 is 5. So we can be happy with our calculations and we can move on knowing that we are correct.
Question three, I've decided to do uh, in a table format, and I've split 782 into 780 and 2, and I've split 23 up into 20 and 3, and now I just need to cross multiply. So I know 20 times 700, I can go 2 times 7 is 14, okay, and then, you know, there are three zeros in the, in the question, 20 times 700, so I know that there are three zeros in the answer. Okay, I can also say 2 times 700 is 1,400 and then add that additional zero for the multiple of 10 and that gives me 14,000. 20 times 80, I can say 20 times 8 is 160 and then again I need to add that additional zero and then 20 times 2 is 40. Okay, uh, then the second line 3 times 700 is 2,100. Uh, 3 times 80 is 240, and 3 times 2 is 6, okay, and now I can simply just add, so 14,000 and 2,100 is 16,100, 1,600 and 240 is um, 1,840, and then I've got 40 and 6, which make up 46, and then I can just add those numbers. Uh, 0, 0, and 6 is 6, 0, 4, and 4 is 8, um, 1 and 8 is 9, 6 and 1 is 7, and then 1 by itself will give you 17,986. But let's go have a look at um, how this works out in your traditional column method. So our answer is 17,986. So I'm just going to clear a bit of uh, space for you. Um, and I'll put our answer there. So if we did that in our traditional column method, it would look something like this. And 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 8 is 24. Carry the 2. 3 times 7 is 21. Add the 2 is uh, 23. Okay, then we've got the zero. Two times two is four. Two times eight is sixteen. Put the six down and carry the one. And then two times seven is fourteen. Plus that one is fifteen. And then if I go and add, which I need to do, I will get the following answer: um, one thousand seventeen thousand nine hundred eighty-six. And you can see that you get the same answer for both methods. You could obviously use the doubling and halving method if, if you like that method. Um, you could split it 782 times 20 and then 782 times 3. Either way, you should, uh, you should always get the same answer of 17,986. Okay. Just make sure that you check your calculations um and make sure that you're quite methodical in how you set it out your next question is a short division question six comma seven to six and that's divided by three um let's create a bit more space there my apologies okay uh and we know three goes into six twice keep the comma in line three goes into seven twice and there's one left over and then that 2 becomes 12, so 3 goes into 12 four times with nothing left over, and 3 goes into 6 twice. So how do we check that? We can say 2, 2, 4, 2 uh, multiplied by 3, and that will give us, let's check if we correct, 6, 7, 2, 6. So therefore our calculation is correct. Question five is the subtraction of decimals. And the first thing you'll notice is that the denominators are different. So we need to find the lowest common denominator. And the lowest common denominator of nine and two is going to be 18. So seven over nine, subtract a half with the lowest common denominator of 18. You know that nine goes into 18 twice. So two times seven is 14. Uh, two goes into 18 nine times. So nine times one is nine. And 14 minus 9 is 5. And that gives us an answer of 5 over 18. Question 6 is the division 
by 100 and we know that a number gets smaller if we divide it by 100 and it gets smaller by two places so if we've got 42,91 divided by 100 okay then your number gets two places smaller and it becomes 0, 0,4291 for question number seven is the division of a fraction and i'm hoping that you guys remember uh, that when we divide we first of all we should make sure we've got two fractions just so that it's visually easier to understand um, this then becomes a multiplication sign the division sign and the fraction after the division sign uh, becomes inverted so the reciprocal we can go 6 times 1 is 6, and 9 times 4 is 36, and then you'd need to simplify that to 1 sixth. Alternatively, you can recognize that um, 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. Okay, then you could say 3 times 1 is 3, and 9 times 2 is 18, and that simplifies to a sixth. Or you can simplify this fraction to 1 over 3. And there you get one times one is six and three times two, sorry, one times one is one and three times two is six. Okay, so you've got a couple of options there. I would encourage you to simplify uh, diagonally and simplify your fractions the way I have. It just makes your simplification process at the end a lot easier to manage. The multiplication of fractions in question eight, uh, I'm sure we're all comfortable with. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be two fifths. And again, it's handy to write it as two fractions. Okay, there's no cross uh, simplification that we can do here. So we simply have two times six is 12, and five times one is five. And if you needed to convert that to a mixed fraction, it would be five and two fifths. And then a percentage question to end off on. 70% of 7,810, okay? Uh, I always say work out 10% first. So you've got different uh, methods to use here. Okay, we know that of means multiply. So I'm saying 10%, find that first. And to find 10%, I just need to divide by 10. That gives you 781. Okay, so now that I've got 10%, to find 70%, I can just multiply 781 by 7. Okay, and 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 8 is 56. Carry the 5. 7 times 7 is 49. Plus the 5 is 54. So therefore, 70% of 7,810 is going to be 5,467. Okay? You can absolutely um, go and do it in a different method, okay? And that different method, you might say 70 over 100 times 7,810 over 1, okay? We know we can simplify this to 7 tenths, and then when we multiply those two fractions, 10 goes into 10 once, and into 781, uh, sorry, 7,810 781 times, and then we got the same calculation, um, 7 multiplied by 781, which is going to give you your 5,467. Okay, I hope you guys are, are, are continue to remember these concepts that we've taught. As I've said many times before, it's always good to consolidate and practice and revise uh, past principles, particularly mental arithmetic, um, as it can save you so much time when you start doing assessments when you get older into high school. So today's main theme is uh, data handling uh, and we're going to be looking at averages um, but I just wanted to go through a little bit of uh, theory with you first. So we have primary and secondary data. Okay. Uh, so first of all data is often a list of numbers which can be called scores or results. Um, so for example the hearts in centimeters of four people could be 135 centimeters, 145, 180, and 178, and that is classified as data. Okay. Other data could be the number of runs scored in a cricket match, the number of tries scored in a rugby game, goals in a football game, or various football games. 
um, etc. Okay, but data can be called scores or results. Now you get two different types of data. You get primary data and you get secondary data. And what's the difference between the two? So primary data is when there is no information or results uh, on a particular topic. Okay, so you would then need to go and find new data uh, by yourself. So primary data can come in the form of interviews, questionnaires, surveys, experiments, or observations. Now, the uh, pros and cons of primary data is um, the, the positive about primary data is that the data is recent. It's up to date. It's reliable because you've collected it and it's up to date. Uh, and it's exactly what you want to know. Okay. Uh, the negative part of uh, collecting primary data is it can be expensive. It requires a lot of work and a lot of time. So, for example, if you want to know the hearts of all the children uh, in your class, you've actually got to go and physically ask them, measure them, and record it. Whereas if that had been done uh, maybe last year, you could just go and collect the, the data from last year. Now, doing that would be called sec using secondary data, okay? So, secondary data is when information exists or results are already available and they've been collected by someone else. So, you're using someone else's information um, and that's often taken from trade directories or from reports or from websites. Um, there are multiple ways of, of um, finding out about data that you need. Now, the positive for secondary data is that it's less expensive um, and it's instantly available because the work has already been done for you by someone else. The negative part of, of secondary data is that it could be quite old uh, and therefore not really relevant to what you're trying to, to find out or analyze. Uh, and sometimes it's not always the exact information that you require. Um, so that's just a little, a little bit of an introduction into primary and secondary data before we move on to uh, calculating averages. So the first average I would like to look at is called the range. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a recap for a lot of you from your grade five and six work. Um, but a set of data has a highest value and a lowest value. And all the other values in the data lie in between the highest and the lowest value. So the range is going to be uh, the difference between the highest and the lowest score and you can see on your screen um, the range is equal to highest score minus lowest score and I've given you an example of different lengths uh, and the first thing to notice is that those lengths are not written in any particular order. Now you can write, rewrite them for range in ascending order. Remember ascending is smallest to biggest uh, but it's not entirely necessary for range. So what you need to do is you need to find the highest value and you can see the highest value here is nine centimeters. Okay, you need to find the lowest value and you can see the lowest value is three centimeters. Okay, uh, and then you need to subtract those two amounts. So therefore nine minus three is going to be equal to six centimeters. And as you can see, I've put in brackets there that it's really important for you to include the unit of measurement if there is one in your answer. Okay, so that's range. So I'd like you guys to go and work out the ranges of those four sets of data. Um, press pause, go find the highest, go find the lowest, subtract them, see if you can get the correct range, and we'll go through it together on the Google Jamboard. Guys, there are your answers on the screen. I've done them for you already. So in question number one, your highest value is going to be 11. Okay, uh, and that you can see there and your uh, lowest value is going to be one. And you can see that over there. And then 11 minus one is 10. So your range for the first set is 10. The second question, if you look through that set, your highest value is going to be 25,0. And your lowest value is going to be 22,9. Okay, and then if you subtract those two numbers, you should get 2,1. Question number three might be a little bit tricky. Uh, so just remember when we're dealing with negative numbers, uh, the larger the number with a negative sign, the smaller it is. So your highest value there is zero degrees Celsius because everything else has a, a negative sign in front of it. And your lowest value is going to be negative six. 
So the range from zero to negative six is still six. Um, okay, so that will be your answer for three. And in question number four, the important thing is to convert everything to the same unit of measurement. And I converted 26 millimeters to 2,6 centimeters that you can see with question number four. I then subtracted the lowest amount, which was 1,8 centimeters, and that gave me a range of 0, 0,8 centimeters. Okay, so that is how you calculate the range. The next average I'd like to look at is called the mode. Uh, and the mode is also called the measure of central tendency, which, which is another way of calling it an average. Uh, and you can see from the screen that the mode or modal score is the score that occurs the most often in a given set of data. So the mode is therefore the entry with the highest frequency. So if highest frequency is something that occurs the most. Um, there are a couple of exceptions. So you can have a set of data with no mode, and that would be when there are no repeated scores. You can have a set of data where two scores share the same highest frequency. So that would be called bimodal, and we know that bi means two, so therefore there are two modes. And if there are more than two scores that share the same highest frequency, then the data set is called multimodal, and that's obviously multiple modes. Okay, so I'd like you to go work out the modes of uh, those three questions. And then you'll see in the, the table at the bottom, I've asked you to work out the range and the mode. But I've also um, given you a, a question looking at it in a different light where you need to fill in numbers on the data set so that the range and mode equal what they've given you. Okay, so see if you can go uh, work those those uh, three problems and then and then the data set table out and press play to to see how you get on what I've done for you is I've underlined um, the the modes so you can see in question number one that the number eight repeats itself twice and the number five repeats itself twice so this set will be bar modal okay and the modes here are going to be five and eight Okay, so I'll separate them with a semicolon. Um, your second question, uh, you can see that all the numbers repeat themselves. And each number, so 8 repeats itself 3 times, 5 repeats itself 3 times, 7 repeats itself 3 times, and so does 9. So that's going to be multimodal. Okay, and that's going to be the numbers... 8, 5, 9, and 7. Okay, so you can have, uh, as we discussed earlier, a set with more than one mode, either bimodal or multimodal. Okay, and then in question number 3, you can see that 15 uh, occurs twice and 7 occurs twice. So again, that's going to be bimodal. And your numbers are going to be 7 and 15 okay now for the data set uh, at the bottom uh, in the first line you've got one two two three four uh, so your highest value is four your lowest value is one so your range there let's just enlarge it a little bit your range there is going to be three okay four minus one is three and your mode you can see that the number two repeats itself twice so that's the number with the highest frequency. So your mode is going to be 2. Now in the second question, they've given us the range of 3. Okay, so we know that the highest value minus the lowest value must be 3. And you can see the lowest value at the moment is 5. So what minus 5 is going to give you 3? And that's correct. It's 8. Okay, and then you can see that 5 is the number that uh, repeats itself uh, the most. Um, and that's going to be your mode. In fact, it's the only number that repeats itself. The third question, you've got a range of 23. So you can see that your uh, lowest value is 4. So what minus 4 is going to give you 23? And yes, that's 27. Okay, so 27 minus 4 is going to give you 23. Your mode needs to be 6. And at the moment, 6 only happens once in the data set. So we must be missing another 6, 
which will mean 6 as the highest frequency and 6 is the mode. For uh, the fourth set, it's getting a little bit trickier. You can see your range is 30, and you've already got the number 30 in your set. So what uh, 30 minus what is going to give you 30, and that's going to give me 0. Okay, so we know we need to put a 0 in there. Your mode is 6 again, but at the moment there are no 6s on your, on your screen. And you can see the number 2 has repeated itself twice. So for the mode to be 6, we know that 6 must be the number that occurs the most. So that means we need 3 number 6s, and therefore number 6 becomes your mode. Okay? Your fourth example, your range is 19. Um, so you can see your lowest entry at the moment is 1. So that's correct. 20 minus 1 is going to give you 19. So my range is 19. That's great. Um, and now we need to have a look um, at your mode. And at the moment, you've got two number 1s, you've got two number 3s, you've got two number 9s. Okay, and if you notice, all those numbers are written in order. All right, so I must therefore need another number 9 for my mode to be 9. Okay, I couldn't have had 16 in that square because then I would have had two number 1s, two number 3s, two number 9s, and two number 16s, and, and it wouldn't have given me a mode. Uh, and they haven't, haven't said that it was multimodal. So uh, 9 would be the number that goes into that square, which then gives you three number 9s, which makes the mode 9. Your last question, uh, you can see your highest value is 26, your lowest value is 12, so when I subtract those two to get the range, it's 14, uh, and they've told me that my mode is 19, and you can see I've got two number 17s, I've got two number 22s, so I ultimately need more 19s than 22s, so I can have 19 in those squares. And that will give me a mode of 19 because 19 occurs uh, four times. Um, if I had put 17 into this square, that would have made 17, 3 and 19, 3, which means it would have been bimodal. But we're only looking for one mode. So therefore, 19 goes into that bottom square. Okay. Okay, so that's mode uh, for you guys. Okay, the next measure of central tendency is the mean. Okay, so the mean is the average. Okay, so the mean score is the average score in a data set. Um, and they have included the uh, symbol for the mean score. It's the X with a little dash on the top. So to find the mean score from a, a data or a set of data, we add up the scores and we divide by the number of entries. And I've included the, the formula for you where it says mean or average equals uh, add. And summate means to add all the entries. So add all the scores together and divide by the total number of scores. So if I gave you the data set of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12, and I asked you to find the average or the mean of that, you would add 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 together. That would give you 42. And you can see there's six entries. Uh, so 42 divided by 6 is 7. So your average or your mean would be equal to 7. There is another way of looking at the mean. And uh, if you have a look at the bottom example, it, it says Jack Dallas finished third, first, second, and it gives you a list of, of the places he ended in his nine races. What place must Jack now finish in his 10th race to have an average position of three? So we've been given the mean or the average uh, of three, and now we need to figure out what the missing uh, piece of data is to make that formula true. So if I add up all the places he came in, I'm going to get an answer of 25, and 25 is the sum of the first nine races. Um, I know that I'm going to be dividing by 10 because they're 10 races. So what do I add to 25 so that when I divide that number by 10, it gives me 3? And you, sh you should have recognized that 30 divided by 10 is 3. So therefore, uh, he needs to finish fifth in that 10th race because 25 plus 
5 is 30, that divided by 10 is 3, uh, and that will give you his, his average finishing place of third. Okay, so there are two different ways of looking uh, or asking you a question based on the mean. So I'd like you guys to give the following five questions uh, a go, and they're all involving a uh, mean or the average. Uh, work them out, press play, and let's see how you guys get on. Okay, so I've done the first one on the screen for you. Fisherman caught 22 fish on Monday, 25 on Tuesday, and 40 on Wednesday. Uh, what is the average number of fish they caught over the three days? So we need to add 22, 25, and 40 together. We get 87. We need to divide by 3 because there are three entries for the three days. And 87 divided by 3 is 29. So the mean or average number of fish that they caught per day is going to be 29. The second question, if the mean of 20 scores was 3.5, what is the sum of all the scores for this data? So we know that 20 scores uh, added up is going to give, give me a particular number, and we can call that number x. We know that x divided by 20 is going to give me 3.5. So what is x going to be equal to? And then we can just say 3.5 times 20 will give me x. Okay, so another way of writing that down uh, is going to be x divided by 20 gives me 3.5. And then we know if we work backwards, we can just say 3.5 multiplied by 20, and that's going to give me 70. Okay, so the sum of all the scores um, is going to be 70. Uh, and we can always check that. We go 70 divided by 20. Does that give me 3.5? Absolutely. So therefore, I know that my calculation must be correct. Okay, your question in number three. The mean score for a set uh, of three numbers is seven. Uh, find, the, find the new mean when a score of 21 is added. So um, if I've got three numbers uh, and I divide by three and it gives me seven, okay, um, find the new mean when uh, a score of 21 is added. Okay, so there, there's a bit to think about here. The first thing we need to do is find out what number should go into that square. And as we did in the second question, if we work backwards, we go 7 times 3, then we know that that's going to be 21. So at the moment, the three numbers added up is going to be 21. Um, and then we need to add a new score. Of 21 so if I add 21 onto the original 21 I get 42 and I've got an additional score so that means I must have 42 divided by 4 okay and if we work that out it's not going to give us an exact answer 44 uh, goes into 4 once and 4 goes it doesn't go into um, 2 so it's 0 remainder 2 and we know that's going to be 10 remainder 2 over 4 which is equal to 10 comma 5 okay so that's going to be your your answer for question number three ten and a half okay question number four the average of two numbers is 15 okay so let's write that in there the average is 15 um, and one of the numbers is 29 okay what is the other number so I know that there are two entries, so I know that the total um, must be equal to 30 because 30 divided by 2 is 15. So I know that the second entry must be 1. Uh, so that's going to give me 30. And then I know 30 divided by 2 is equal to 15. Okay, so my second entry is going to be 1. And then your last question uh, on averages or on mean for today is the sum of a set of scores is 234. Okay, the mean is 13. How many scores are there? Okay, so what I need to find out is 234 divided by a particular number is going to give me 13. Okay, so how do I do that? 
Okay, so I can just divide 234 by 13. And that should tell me how many um, numbers there are in the set of data. So let's go ahead and do 234 divided by 13. And it's a long division question. So as always, I'm going to go 13 times 10 is 130. Okay. Um, I know that 13 times 5 then is going to be half 130. So that's 65. Okay. Sorry, 65. Uh, that's going to give me a total of 195. Um, I can see that I've still got 39 to go. Okay. Um, so I know that 13 goes into 39 three times. And then that's going to give me uh, an answer of 234. So I'm looking at 18. Um, 18 entrants, 15 at 3 is going to give me 18. So there are 18 scores um, in that set of data. Okay, guys, go back and, and have another look at the questions. If you if you made any errors and you're not sure of what's, what's going on, I've also um, put some activities with memos uh, on worksheetcloud.com's uh, website. So please make use of those and make sure you understand range mode and mean as best as possible okay guys that just leaves us with our finisher for today which is the game of 24 and, I, and i'm pretty confident that you go, guys know how it works by now um, so enjoy that keep working on your mental arithmetic skills remember your order of operations is, is really really important and the, just a reminder to send me an email if you have any queries or or, or feedback at grade 7 uh, at worksheetcloud.com Great Sevens, thanks very much for joining me today. I hope you guys uh, learned something or at least consolidated some of the information that you already knew. Uh, have a really good day and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.